The concept behind smart TVs are actually quite simple. It's pretty much just a miniature computer put in any type of display and you've got yourself what you're calling a smart TV. These computers, they can be very small chips, they don't have to be that advanced and pretty much the simple thing behind it is it's just a small computer that you can pretty much go through and use for everyday tasks like streaming Netflix, which of course a computer is fine for doing. But I really wanted to take today to point out a good fact is that if you have a monitor and you spend about 30 bucks making sure you have some really nice small chips to put in there, you can actually take apart a monitor, put this in the back and rig it up and you pretty much can just hook up a keyboard, a mouse, and uh, you're pretty much good to go and you've got yourself a pretty much smart TV that you know works anything like else you can stream Netflix is basically a computer you can do all those tasks that you want to but you don't have to pay the enormous amount of money you can just get a monitor and if you're up for having a small size you can get a monitor like this for like 60 bucks and the um, Raspberry Pi the newest model is like 30 bucks so that if you're even considering doing some like slight games on it you can even do that as well but the big thing is I'm using the oldest Raspberry Pi model right here and this goes for like 10 bucks online and if you're just going to be streaming games uh, I definitely recommend you just or just streaming um, uh, videos things like that you're gonna be good for just grabbing one of these and throwing it in the back of a said monitor so one of the biggest things I want to talk about is there's a couple of the other parts you're gonna need peripherals in particular so this is a Raspberry Pi model uh, doesn't really matter matter on the model I believe this is a B I believe I don't have no I don't remember it was a while since I got it. But some of the other components I have over here is a wireless keyboard so that that way, you know, when you're sitting back on, you know, your couch or something, you don't have to sit and, you know, constantly basically your remote. Um, and then of course, I've just got some power. So the Raspberry Pis are notorious for using the same power that you would find on any Android phone, which is no problem with that. It just means you have a if you can find one of those chargers, you're pretty much good to go and you can save yourself some money. Um, an SD card, I've got a micro USB uh, SD adapter so this is actually a micro uh, SD right here and that's what you're looking at there and that's it's just an adapter to um, make it fit in the regular large size for this Raspberry Pi model uh, some are different so please keep in mind that you know you might not just want to go out and you know I know the there's a small really small Raspberry Pi model that takes the micro and I know that the bigger Raspberry Pi models take the adapters as well as the full-size um, carts so once you've got that, a couple things, other things I'd recommend is also make sure you get some type of wireless adapter. The one that I had originally for this one, I actually fried. I don't know necessarily how, but it got fried. And so I haven't been able to find my other one, so I'm still looking for that. But in the future, for you guys, um, you would be a good thing to get a wireless adapter if you're planning on streaming anything off there. If you have direct internet connection, there's also an ethernet port on these as well. So the logic behind this is pretty simple. A regular type of monitor, this is my monitor from over there, um, has a couple options. If you don't feel like going through and taking apart the whole back, you can pretty much just attach it somewhere where it's not going to get used and it's perfectly fine there and you could do all your everyday tasks without having to do a bunch of wiring. If you really are concerned about hiding it, you can always take, take off the back and usually the monitors have about a big chip here and they have um, another chip here, but they usually have a bunch of open space that you should be able to fit something this small in if you're really up for that. What I would not recommend that for though is if you're planning on pl plugging in some peripherals like a keyboard, mouse, it's really good to just inconvenient just to have it like right there instead of doing it, you know, where it's inside the components so you have to take off the back every time you want to plug something in. A USB hub would be a good example for that, but pretty much it's just really good idea in general practice if you're interested to put it right here. So. As you see on the back of this monitor, let's see if I can bend it down a little bit, we've got a couple options. We've got the power, we've got the displays, um, there's an HDMI, and then there's some audios right here. The biggest thing is, if you're not going to use any of these, I'm thinking I'm going to put mine right here, and basically just try to, might flip it around actually, and that way I get a little bit more space, and that way I don't actually cover any of the I.O. that I'm going to be needing. Um, to also keep in mind that this the Raspberry Pis do have an HDMI, so if you're um, going to be using that up, just keep in mind that you can just plug HDMI to HDMI. And the other thing is you can also go through and you'll have access to all the USB ports to go through and grab as well. And then of course you got power, which you have to plug in separately, but I'm sure you could hotwire something if you're really interested. But this is really supposed to be something simple you can do at home. So basically you just kind of tape it in there or you could find some way of doing it. I think personally, I think the best way to do it, you could probably get some um, 
You could probably tape down something that's not like electrical. So you could probably tape something like the SD card down uh, and then you'd be good as well as putting some tape maybe on the USB, but nothing of the electrical sort. Or you could always screw it in if you're in, if you're really committed to doing that. Or as I said, you could take it off the whole back and pretty much just go about doing it. As I said, I don't want to do anything permanent to this because I obviously only have so much stuff. But um, pretty much that's the plan is, and that's what I'll go through and I'll tape it down. And I'll see you guys in a couple seconds once we've got everything set up. So, as you can see here, I've got a pretty much simple option of Linux. Uh, it's not really anything particularly special. Let me make sure my keyboard is on. Hopefully it's got a charge. I think that might be the wrong button. I think it might be out of battery by chance. So, I oh, know we're good. We'll see. Let's get it connected. So this is pretty much, as I said, the same keyboard. I can control what I like. Um, and you got just a simple Raspberry Pi operating system in Linux, which of course I've got everything situated. So I, how I like it, of course. But pretty much you can just go through and go through and connect to the internet, etc. I said I don't have the wireless adapter set up. If I were to be able to do that though, I'd pretty much be able to click on any of the wireless access tools, go to, etc. I don't know, Netflix, anything I felt like doing, and just pretty much surf the web. It's also something you could do. As I said, gaming is not too much possible on here. If you wanted to do something gaming along those lines, you probably would most likely looking better off getting a Intel Nook than actually doing this. This is more something that's really cheap that actually works fine. And as you can see, this right here is the chip and I have it still sitting out here and it's perfectly fine. Um, I mean, it's, nothing's hot, nothing's worth like, worrying about catching on fire or anything like that. So yeah, you can pretty much just go through and it's basically like a miniature computer. Um, the only downside, of course, is it just is not as powerful anywhere close. But um, just keep that in mind as you're looking at something you'd be equivalent to. And of course, the newest of these chips actually end up working a lot better and a lot more powerful. So you actually won't have any issues. But of course, if you just get like a Linux uh, based uh, sy uh, system, you can go through and do all the web searching, get Chrome, etc. And without any issues. So to start off, I know there's probably, you know, this is probably not the ultimate way to do it. And I'm sure there's some simpler chip way to do it. But I feel like this is a really practical way if you're interested in turning your T, you know, your TV into, a, you know, or your monitor into a smart TV. That's pretty much all it is, is just access to pretty much, you know, turn any monitor pretty much into a smart TV. And if I wanted to move this into my room, I'd be able to pretty much sit on my bed and just chill out and, you know, surf the internet with this wireless pretty much remote, or you could call it, or you could just, as I said, it's just a keyboard with a trackpad or whatever. But you can go through and pretty much just search whatever you want. As I said, I'm not connected to the internet. But um, I've pretty much just got, as I said, everything. And of course, I can go connect to Netflix had I had internet. But um, I'm, I'm, I don't, I'm too lazy to actually bring up a cable to my computer back there. But as you can see, I can go through and type stuff on here. And I can pretty much just go through. And you go to Netflix, you can watch YouTube on here. It's pretty much, as I said, something you wouldn't have to worry about. And I mean, the operating, the operating system and the interface is actually really nice. It takes a while to get used to. Uh, but of course you could always get a different version and it all depends i'm using the raspberry pi operating system so i mean this is just the stuff that i had on the system um and of course you can just go through and find whatever you want on youtube it's good for youtube netflix hulu all those other services you use it's basically as it says smart tv you do have to put a little bit more more work into finding it but i'm sure if you put some shortcuts you'd be doing fine and no problem also it's just it's really simple to do like this is quiet like, I don't hear anything. Um, the processor isn't really hot, and it's just really quiet. Like, you don't, there's no noise, because it's just a single chip, and it's a passively cooled, so absolutely no sound whatsoever, and it's just perfectly quiet, so you could have it on, and, you know, I know some TVs actually make a little bit of noise, and this is just, or some smart TVs make a little noise, and this is just perfectly quiet, um, so it's not at least a chip that's going to be causing an issue. Um, setting it up though, as I said, the difficult, most difficult part would probably getting the operating system on the SD drive. And of course for the SD drive, you only need something like eight gigs. And now the eight gigs back then, which was probably like 20 bucks for the eight gig drive and now like three. So I'm sure you could get something really cheap. I know there was like 64 gigs for like, you know, 20 bucks. So, I mean, if you really want to get something nice, um, that's what you can expect. And of course the newest chips as well are really powerful. So if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, I'm sorry. I couldn't please you. And, um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed my tutorial. As I said, things I would, I don't feel like personally doing at the moment is just like putting this on here. You could always just, you could have something to wrap around the cables, hold the cables up. You could have this all out of sight, just depending if you got some smaller cables. I'm working with what I have. And of course, if you really don't care about looks, it doesn't have to be hidden anyway. And it's perfectly fine to go on cloth. I mean, I'm not like, 
I mean, I don't know if I want to start pressing my finger on there. You can always get a case on it, and then you're even doing better as well. But um, hope you enjoyed, and I uh, hope to see you around as well. And if you like these mods kind of stuff, check out my channel for more. Thank you.